Well, welcome to part two of the uh, Tenma. I've been saying it wrong all along because there's no I. Tenma uh, 727745 uh, True RMS. Um, essentially, it's a multimeter for a tech bench, really. Um, go watch part one to get all the extra details that you're not going to get in this one. This one is going to be covering the software uh, interface for this uh, $50, $60 multimeter. Um, as well as the battery usage and a tear down and look inside for the build quality and how it looks inside. And then a wrap up of everything at the end as far as my opinion on the product. So a uh, link below the video here will be back to part one. I'll try and maybe I can put a link up here too. At the end I'll put a link to it. So okay on to this. This, this is the software that comes with it. Uh, it comes with the data cable as you saw in part one. It's uh, optical linked. It's RS-232, which means you have to have a RS-232 or a serial port to USB port adapter. Once you get that uh, hooked up, you're almost good to go before you uh, actually hook up and connect with the software. You want to go into your uh, device manager for your computer, uh, find the port that it's on. I recommend that you use port 1 for the properties. Uh, because the software always defaults to port 1, you can't change it to any, any other port on startup. You can change the port, but you, on startup it's always COM1. So you might as well set your software, you might as well set your, your, your serial port converter to, to COM1. And then under the settings you have to use what is in the manual um, in order for the software to connect. It's actually at the end here, and it tells you you have to have the baud rate, start stop bits, parities, odd, uh, data bit 7 and you have to set that in your device manager for your Windows this is working on Windows 7 so it seems to be fine uh, once you get that all in then you can install the software launch the software connect your cable and only then will you want to be able to hit the connect button uh, so that everything you don't even want to plug in your you even you don't even want to plug this in until you get everything set um, uh, you want to unplug it and plug it back in so it catches that COM port properly and then you got a COM port setting in the software and then you, get, you have a connect button so let's uh, let's talk about the software a little bit I'll hook it up to my digital uh, I mean my malt uh, to my uh, power supply just so we have input data um, uh, that I can scroll around with but for the most part the rest of this part is going to be just software orientated so let's uh, zoom in on the software That should be a pretty good view. Now you can't change the size of this uh, of this box. It's not resizable, and I think that's by design. I don't think it matters that I'm on Windows 7 or anything like that. I did try and use uh, Ultra DMM, which is another program that connects to a lot of multimeters, but Ultra, D Ultra DMM software did not connect. But the software that come with it on the CD-ROM that came with the multimeter did work. It's very poor software. It's not. It's very, very poor quality. But it does do the one thing you need, and that is it. It does capture the data. You'll see there's an analog meter over here. It does work as far as the needle goes back and forth, but it doesn't. It doesn't label what you're reading. It doesn't label it as volts or ohms or or amps or anything. It just it just changes the scale. Then doesn't even match the meter. Uh, so really, all this is giving you is sort of a. a an analog bar graph is all it really amounts to. Um, and then down here, you, it graphically represents stuff, but once again, it, it doesn't give you any values of what it's graphing. And it always stays at these large values like 4,000 and negative 3,000. And it's uh, kind of almost annoying just to have it there. So ignore this, it's useless. Ignore this, it's useless. This does read at least what, you're, what you have. So we'll go ahead and hit connect. And now you'll see that this is moving, it's reading 12, and this has the right scale, but other than that, it's, it's not going to be accurate if we change the scale. And this it does not have the right scale, it's reading 1,000 right now. It has a zoom button, you can zoom in on it, but once again, it's, it's just, it's not scaled properly, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's pretty annoying. Um, it is capturing over here, but all the settings are default. You never can change them, so they always come up the same, which is kind of annoying. Uh, it always comes up in this repeat mode. You'll see there's a repeat button over here. What that basically says is if it reads the same value, it skips it. If you uncheck this, watch down here, you'll watch it really take off. Let me clear the screen for you. 
I'll clear it and then I'll hit take off repeat and now it basically just takes in it's like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 it's actually telling you that it's it's got a timestamp it's, it's taking a reading as quickly as it can it does read three times a second though the display I don't think updates three times a second the uh, software does update you get about right between two and three readings a second come flying through it tells you if it's AC or DC and it tells you the, the value that it has and it, that is uh, units it'll go volts millivolts whatever and it will uh, auto range tell you that you're in auto range not manual and it's putting all this it's recording all of this uh, another one of the issues if you, you I guess you could have a, a USB connector with, with this software and per the uh, PDF that comes with this it does work with a lot of other uh, meters but guess what they're called UNI-T <laughs> so the actual PDF user manual for this which is really poor it's only like two pages it makes reference to um, UNI-T meters that some of them do come with USB connectors and if you click that that's how you would connect but I have a uh, my meter is my meter is a com com only serial port you have uh, no, those are really useless. This is how many records you are limited to. Like when it gets to a thousand, it'll stop. It always defaults to a thousand. So every time you come into it, if you want to record more than a thousand or ten thousand, you have to come in and check check it to unlimited. That's all I can think of is that's for older computers. Kind of annoying that you always got to change that though. Uh, but it's ripping along right now and making those recordings. If if I want to, I can change the sample. Right now it it's set to 10 seconds but if I clicked it let's say I click it and change it to one second it won't take effect until I check the box so as soon as I check the box then it says oh okay I'm gonna take a reading every single second now and so that's a way of slowing it down and then once again if I do repeat then it will ignore repeats that's what repeat means it's not intuitive and it's not in the manual the PDF manual is useless it does give you a min max uh, that's nice. So even though your meter doesn't have a min max, then this this does have a min max. Hopefully you can see my pointer scrolling around there. Um, these are uh, set min max. All that means is, uh, and it's really poor because it doesn't range. So if I turned it on, it would say, "Hey, six is a max and six is a min," and I'm thinking it's actually meaning sixty. Uh, I, it's really crazy so if I actually went down to say actually no if I went down to 10 see now it's warning me but if I went to 13 it would stop oh no it's not 13 see the ranging doesn't work let's go three let's go 300 see it's still it's in thousands so it's got to be geez that's just crazy it's got to be 1300 okay see yeah so basically you've got it, it's not ranging it's it's more like what you see over here in the graph and so you you that's just stupid that it, it doesn't have the range that this has you have to know that means 13 volts when it says 1300 so almost useless but it would give you a way of saying this is my max this is my min and give me a warning when I when I'm outside of that range so I could make this negative 1300 so this would be like positive to negative uh, 13 volts um, and it would warn me if I get out of that. So I'll go ahead and raise my meter up here. Um, so over here on my, I'll just bring this up and you'll hear it start beeping after, see? And I'll turn it back down. The over limit, over limit. And so that's what that is. It's pretty annoying and pretty useless. But the only magic about this is the fact that you can save the file it defaults to Excel file, which would be fine, but um, I, I prefer to go to text file. I've done some tests already. I'll make this test four. And uh, it says it saved it. It always goofs up the, the video here. This does not go away. Once you save a file, it destroys, it destroys the video of this. So <laughs> at least in Windows 7 it does. So you have no choice but to close this now once you've saved a file. Though you can reopen a file if you wanted to, but there's no reason for it. Um, and then really the only thing is to go in and, and bring it up. And it does a pretty good job. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more here on that. So you can see it gives you the, the count. 
and then the exact time it was taken, whether and what units it was, the values. Actually, this is DC, the measurement type, and then this is the units volts. If it were millivolts, it would show. And that would it's not exact. It's readable, but it's not exactly usable. Um, and let me show you an example of how that. Well, it's there, and you've got it, and it's and you can load it into Excel or something else fairly easily if you didn't dump it directly into Excel. But I made some other examples like here's one with doing Hertz and let me see if I can zoom in and make sure you, you can see real good so it's going along and it's saying Hertz well then here it hits kilohertz well notice that the decimal places of course agree with the kilohertz and the Hertz but now if you're dumping this into Excel you're gonna have to compensate for the fact that these records here are kilohertz so you have to write program or you have to find them and replace them based on this it would have been smarter if there would have been just straight up Hertz and, and just more decimals and then you wouldn't have to convert them when you graph that because right now if you try to graph that it would be wrong because it wouldn't understand this value so yeah not not the most pleasant way to store it but it's there and for fifty four dollars you know it's 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 a worthwhile feature to take your logging Especially when you can, you know, ignore repeats and stuff like that. And at least it go as long as your batteries would go. Okay, so I'm going to call that uh, everything that you need to know or care to know about the uh, about the logging software. Pretty poor. But as far as uh, um, recording uh, your data, uh, overshoot is an issue with this meter, like you would have heard in part one. Uh, if I connect it says there's 12 volts if I just unplug the the connector uh, from from the uh, power supply um, you'll notice down here I'll see if I can tighten that up that you're getting a you're getting zero you're getting like zero readings but watch when I plug it in this thing is definitely at 12 volts and watch when I plug it in you're gonna see well, it, I mean, a lot of volts go through there. So let's go pull up the data file and uh, and see just how high it went. I wonder if I can scroll up through that. It's showing 12. Okay, there's 21 volts right there. Um, and so you know there wasn't 21 volts, but if you've got a, something that's turning on and off and this thing's overshooting with its auto-ranging, you're going to record 21 volts as if it had actually happened, and it did not. And so that's one... That's one real bad drawback for a meter that has overshoot. So let's take a look at the battery and the battery consumption um, and when it's in power off mode how it does. Let's see we have to... There's a screw here for the battery and it is just a self tapper of course. I think that's just gonna pop out of there. Not the easiest thing. Oh, well, the battery is just sort of trapped in there. So, oh, that's interesting. It's even it's even keyed, so you can't put the battery in backwards. So this then has to. Hmm. Now well, that'll make you have to work to get it out of there. That locks off. It's pretty cheesy. If this broke, it would you'd be SOL. Uh, let's see. And the battery drops out. I don't think you can put it in backwards. No, it's. You wouldn't get it in backwards, so that's that's really nice. I like that. <sighs> Can't get to the fuses though, uh, but there is some shielding you can see there. But we got something to, to clip onto. It looks like good access to some sort of an adjustment pot right there too. I wonder if that's for it looks VB VR1, so that might be for you know t tweaking it in or something. It's very easily accessible too. So let's hook up to this and see how this thing does uh, for uh, low battery when the low battery indicator comes on. This is a test I've seen Martin do at MJ Lorton um, YouTube channel. He does a lot of meter reviews, so go check out all of his meter reviews if you really want to see a master do this. But what's interesting here is I, I have the meter under test here reading 5 volts off the Penta ref and I have 9 volts being powered into the back with the battery removed 
so that uh, the meter is being powered by my power supply and this is reading what the power supply is outputting so the power supply comes in here comes out of here around this cable into the back of this guy now I'll start dropping this uh, vo uh, voltages of my uh, power supply until the low battery indicator comes on some squirrely things can happen sometimes the thing can start reading bad before you get to that mark sometimes you'll get past that mark and it'll continue reading but then when you try and recover from a power outage it will actually start reading really crazy it just depends on how they've uh, managed this uh, device internally so let's start by dropping the voltage here and we're basically just looking to see when the low, low battery indicator light comes on 8 volts and at what time, you know, at how low does your battery get before it's, like, see it's already changed a little bit, no oh, it recovered we're down to coming up on 8 volts when do we get our low battery indicator? Not at 7 yeah this is just like a uni T that Martin reviewed, it did the same thing if I remember it really wigged out though coming back okay there's low battery at 4.426 let's come up until it just uh, so about th or three sorry 3.5 is when the low battery starts coming out so that 9 volt battery is going to get so if you have any used 9 volt batteries you might want to use it to power your meter because they're still going to be good for quite a while so let's keep going down until this wigs out because it's still reading correctly at 5 volts so now we're trying to decide will it turn off or start wigging out as reading but this would be your indicator to stop using the meter so you're safe it's a good quality uh, now you just dropped one digit but you're down to 2.8 volts and then now oh, there it goes 2.7 completely out now for the wigginess as I bring it back up it's probably not going to come back no it's not I don't think it will come back at all unless I hit the power button so let's bring it back I, I would have to hit the power button yeah so we'll hit the power button and see if it comes back it doesn't come back on. Whoops, no, it did. It came back on at 4 volts. So, yeah, when you get the power, basically that's a good. When you get your uh, failed battery uh, reading, you just quit using it, replace your batteries, you're good to go. Good test. So, this is a setup to see how much current it's using. And you can see it's kind of bouncing around a lot. Um, it's a really low reading. That's nice. It's, the battery's going to last a long time. But some sort of a probably a um, buck converter in this thing that uh, is changing the power is gulping current in, in random cycles and right now I'm recording this for a minute um, and I can change it around and it, it doesn't change a whole lot it's uh, it stopped now because the recording's done uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the trend now and let's see if you can see that real good I'm not sure so that's uh, the current going around it's uh, going from a little around, I would say the current is, well I could zoom in on it, but I'm going to say it's about point, a lot of these go down to say, probably point three milliamps. This one spiked up to three milliamps, um, and so on and so forth. This is taken over a minute. You can kind of see the humps. Now this is on a, my power supply, uh, uh, but... I've also done this with a battery and it looked just the same. So we could uh, we could probably zoom in on that too, but uh, there's a zoom in of it. Doesn't look like it gets much lower than whatever that is. You can see the. I don't think we can zoom in much more, but yeah. What is the low here? See if I can get on one of those lows. 1.2 milliamps is what this is saying. And if I get on one of the highs, uh, 2.3. So it's bouncing around about a full milliamp um, in that range as that. Uh, as whatever that is doing aside for basically converting the power from 9 volts down to what it's using. Okay, good. Um, let me calculate the battery life or something like that. I'm just going to cut it in half and average it and say that 
It probably uses somewhere around about, uh, I'm just going to say, two, I'm going to say two. So let's say two milliamps is its constant power for calculating its battery life. I'm going to go with about 200 hours. Um, it could be a little less than that. It could be a bit more than that with a average uh, 9 volt battery. But that's that's decent enough performance for for this meter and a 9 volt battery. I'd like to see a lot more than that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's real decent. And I did do it with the backlight, and it went up to 11 milliamps. Uh, and that makes sense because normally that they, these meters will go up to like 20 or th maybe even 30 or 40 milliamps when a good backlight is running and that really poor backlight only draws 11 milliamps. Let's continue with the teardown. Uh, that screw had to come out and then there's supposed to be screws underneath here. Uh, these, little, these little rubber covers come off and then some screws come out. There we go. They're snaps that actually kind of almost broke a little bit, but they're clips style, so they'll wear out if you take them apart too much. Um, it does look like it has some uh, rib protection here, which is a little bit of a, a raised edge here that goes into this uh, recessed section here. That helps in case something blasts apart inside here. Uh, it looks like we're going to have... Uh, uh, a piezo connector here for the buzzer and it's got a couple little springs right here uh, for connecting to. Uh, a big piece of shielding here for the circuitry where the, and the batteries come out here. A couple of more connectors here are going to be for the uh, RS-232 optical connectors here. I believe there is a, there's of course transmit and receive so there's a, there's a transmitter and receiver in each one of those. And one of those. Okay, so we have two small glass fuses, so I wouldn't use this in anything high voltage. I really, even though it's rated for a lot of volts, it's just not smart to to do anything where where you're going to be uh, relying on these fuses and this instrument and these connectors with high high voltage. So just don't use it around that kind of stuff. If you, your life depends on it when you're doing things like that, so get a really good meter. But yeah, you do have some glass fuses here. One's going to be the milliamp, one's going to be the, the amp. And then this is your uh, 10 amp shunt resistor here. So let's open up. So you got some more adjustments here. So the, obviously there are some adjustments. I probably could figure this out and tweak it to where the voltages were even closer um, than they are right now. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get this uh, shield off now. One screw was holding this, this shield and this board down and I took that off and that, that comes off. So you're getting, as Dave Jones would say, you're getting mooned. You're getting the ass end of the board. So you just get the back side and all the goodies are on the other side other than the pot adjustments. Which they're all nicely, conveniently, these pot adjustments are easily easy to get to on this side. There's really nothing else to see on this side. Let me flip the board over for you. Um, so these jacks I'm not real happy with, but they do have uh, some uh, uh, plastic nibs here, or buttons if you will, or that will sink inside of each one of these and hold them in place so that they don't bend. And, and then essentially after, if they bend a lot by inserting your, your probes, then these joints here will crack. Um, so that's a little bit of... of of added performance there and then there's a bit of a shield here that if when it goes on it covers around this uh, fuse though those aren't the greatest fuses like I say um, but it will keep a little blast protection there is some um, they basically have a big uh, foil void or where they've actually taken away the, co uh, the copper so that you'd have less likely of if any high voltages uh, creeping across this board um, but the thing is, most good meters will have it routed out. They'll have it designed so they can route out a whole sections of this PCB so that you can't get board creepage of voltages or currents going, you know, essentially sparking across these gaps. Uh, they've done a little, but not a lot in my opinion. Slipped the board over, took out four screws, and uh, the board should flip over.
Maybe I should just pull up here. There we go. And uh, let's see. As far as this is concerned, we've got the rotary switch here. It's pretty decent as far as switches go. Uh, rotary uh, selection switches go. Comes off. You can see it's got like little, it's pretty standard plastic little brackets in there and the connections that make the connections on these traces here these uh, traces uh, they don't look like they're really thickly coated but mm, they're reasonable uh, they should last well enough for this meter uh, this is the display and this is the zebra connector um, there's nothing else really here except for that display and that's going to connect right across that zebra connections there and these side, these are the backlight LEDs. They in, they emit that green light in through the sides. Okay, let's do a flyover of the circuit board so we can get some high res images. Let me back up just a little bit. There, it's better. And then we'll talk about a little bit what we see. Okay, it's not just trying to get everything in focus there so you can stop the video and take a look at something. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. Um, I guess first off there's a there's a processor here. It's the uh, F79 sorry, FS9721-LPT. It's a microprocessor made by Fortune uh, semiconductor. I believe they're out of Taiwan. It is specifically designed to be used for a 4,000 count meter. I uh, will link to the data sheet um, in the show notes and at toddfun.com. It's supposed to run off of 4 megahertz, but it's using a 3.999 uh, crystal. That's probably okay. It Strangely, it, the data sheet says it has auto power off function, but they didn't implement it. I'm kind of curious why, but uh, there must have been a reason. Um, this is where the power comes in. Uh, looks like it's a, a uh, transistor over here, but they got the one leg is insulated and it's got some silk screening and it's clipped. So it's, I don't know, maybe, the, <laughs> whatever. And I even tried to look that up. I couldn't even find what it was, so I'm not sure how it's being used. Uh, let's see, I wouldn't want to get too deep into the electronics of it because I'm no master at that. Um, this, I uh, looked it up and it was a... Uh, a RMS uh, to DC converter um, that's probably written upside down for you. Good tactile buttons. Uh, see, going farther down, um, well, I take note of, of of these lettering here as well as the lettering here because that is going to help you source wh where this originally comes from. The silk screening does have information like range, hertz, rel, hold. That's nice. This is the power on and off. It actually does cut the power completely on and off. That's nice. Um, this is uh, this mo select mode over here. And if there was any question whether or not this was related in some way to the UNI-T, well, there's your answer. The UNI-T UT60E is what this board, at least for sure the board print is for. And I wouldn't doubt the, all of the functionality is going to match. But So if you want, uh, look up the UTC60, UNI-T UT60E, it should have all the same features if, if it's not identical. Certainly the board, printed board, would be the same, though they could be populated differently. Um, not, there's pretty good uh, um, coating um, on the uh, connectors here. They look like they're a little bit plated, maybe like some slight plating, but it's not the best. But it should last for this meter. There's a dotted line around here where the uh, fuse goes. Uh, I believe this is the amp fuse, but you notice there's extra drill holes here, so you can put a larger fuse on. It actually has got larger holes for a larger fuse if you wanted to, if, if they wanted to sell this or use this board with a better fusing. Same is true with this milliamp fuse. Um, the 500 milliamp fuse could be a larger, and then probably a larger fuse put in like a, uh, um, like a high rupture fuse design could be put in there. Uh, let's see. Going down farther, this is the transist. Or this is the uh, a diode protection, so that when you're uh, 
your fuses will actually blow before your electronics inside get damaged um, by high current. This is uh, essentially allows that protection. Um, let's see, um, Dave Jones has a great video on this. See if I can't link it. He actually has a video on how this actually fully functions, and I'll see if I can put links at Todd Fun in that show notes. Uh, this is a PTC. Um, it basically is a, sort of like a shut, shut shuts it down if too much current flows. This gets hot, um, so that's sort of a, a shutdown there. PTC PTC protection, input resistor protection going up here. Um, I don't know. I've seen a lot better protection, that's for sure. This isn't the best protection. It isn't the least protection. So you're definitely in the price range. Um, not any routing. There's no um, routing in the board for uh, creepage anywhere. Uh, that's odd. There is printing of what these are, as well as these range settings are printed in the silk screen. That's nice. Uh, other than that, um, uh, I will uh, just link the pictures in at Todd Fun for the high-res images if you want to go take a look at them. Well, that concludes all the tests for the uh, Ten, Tenma, Tenma uh, 727745. Uh, pretty decent meter, especially, I mean, this one was $54, now it's $64. If it goes higher than that, I'm not so sure I'd be keen on it for the price. Uh, but because of the data logging, actually, you know, it still is okay because data logging, functioning data logging can be expensive. And you do get, you know, a couple hundred or more hours with this, so you could log for quite a long time. Um, uh, Feature-wise, it's, it's got a good set of features for a tech bench. It's got milliamps and microamps. It did that. It did perform very well with that. Um, it performed very well with essentially everything. Uh, I, would like a, I would like something that has a higher voltage for diode testing, but it functioned. Um, I didn't care for that blue printing. I wish they'd change that to something that was more readable for the alternate functions of all these. Um, it uh, does frequency up to 10 megs. That was really nice. And it, well, we tested up to 7 megs and it was it did good. has decent enough input protection. Uh, so I would feel fr fairly safe using this, you know, even in household electrical. Uh, so it does that. It'll get you by for that. Uh, the probes, I, went, I didn't like the probes much. Um, they get you by, but they weren't they weren't great. The temperature probe, of course, I threw away. I mean, it broke. <laughs> so, yuck. Um, it would be nice to see these things be all uh, USB instead of serial, because then you got to get your serial to USB adapter out and all that. But eh, for the price, I mean, that day's coming. So, um, obviously, this is a UNI-T because we saw it inside on the printed circuit board. This was a UNI-T or UT60E version. So look that up. That's probably its alternate. They must source them the same spot or, or buy them and rebadge them essentially. Um, I don't know who does what though. I don't know who's the, well I guess whoever's doing the, the printing of the circuit boards is certainly the source. Um, does real good on the 9 volt battery. Um, we, we saw it performed all the way down to like 3.6 volts before the battery indicator light came on and it still functioned fine. Uh, I'm going to give it a, essentially a thumbs up. I want to say it's a decent meter. Um, certainly at the $50 to $60 range uh, in true RMS data logging, yeah, it's good. Um, if the price goes up to $90, um, then you have to evaluate that, you know, if those features are, are worth it to you. So, thanks for joining.